Mm. I'm going to put that next to that camera. Oh, oh God, that's falling over now. There you go. There you go. How's that? How's that? There you go. All right. Hi, Susie. Corinne's here. Nice to see you all. Um, oh, now I've covered. Anyway, didn't matter. Um, evening all. We've got the um, questions to be answered. There's some. There's questions they need answering, quite frankly. And uh, I'm a little bit worried because the first one is a photo and it is a dubious photo. So I'm going to tell you now, um, there is a dubious photo coming up. So if there's any children in the house, um, I suggest they leave the room now. Um, have you fixed a tripod? No, I haven't fixed the tripod. Uh, I am still balancing it precariously on the screen. Um, I'm very well, Susie. How are you? So, um, so if there's any underage children on the on the show, um, could they please leave the room now? There's a dubious photo. The nipple has been covered. It's been given by one of the viewers. And in my experience, I have previously been banned instantly with this sort of thing. But I think if you cover up the um, central part of the breast, shall we say? Don't even want to say the word in case I get banned. I don't know how it works. I'm gonna anyway. Let's give it a go. Let's. Here goes. Are you ready? Evening, Sophie. Evening, Fairy Dust. Right, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to show in stream. Oh, God. I've got to make it smaller. Can I make it smaller? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show it on Instagram. Oh, my God. It's massive on Instagram. <laughs> God, it's massive. Oh, God. How can I change? Oh, blimey. Anyway. Let's see how it goes. Right, let's get this done. Right, I had my breast implants. This is the question, by the way. I had my breast implants replaced. Should I take it off while I do the question? Because that is massive. Stop sharing. I'm going to put it on when I've done the question. I'm going to take it off here just in case. I... Right, question. I had my breast implants replaced earlier this year in Turkey. Under the breast, there seemed to be what the surgeon said was swelling. What the surgeon suggested was swelling. Um, unfortunately, this hasn't gone away and is looking worse. The right hand breast also continuously aches and the implant feels strange. You can feel the edge. I've been in touch with the clinic who said it has done it from lack of support. They can fix it for a price. Basically, I'm after a second opinion as to what's happened and what needs to be done. Can you help at all? So... First of all, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to show your photo, um, Exhibit A. Second of all, I would like to say, uh, oh God, what have I done? I pressed the wrong button. Um, I would like to say um, that it's always a little bit difficult, second opinion type stuff. And this... I will give an opinion. No question I'm going to give an opinion, so don't worry about that. But I, um, if you want to like a proper second opinion, that really needs to be in person, clinic, consultation, examine, you know, ideally a bit of information about what, what's been done and previous ops, etc. So this is going to be a little bit of a um, uh, sort of just like a view on stuff of, of, of this. This is the only photo I've got. It's the only view I've got. Um, and so just with, just with that in mind, that's, uh, that's the, um, what's the word disclaimer. So, uh, here goes, we're going to show it again and try and make it as small as possible. So Facebook doesn't tell me off, uh, Instagram, I'm going to show it again. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a slight strange angle and there's a, there's a, there is indeed a bulge at the lower pole. Now, when was this done earlier this year in Turkey? So in terms of revisions, the first thing is a year is sort of normal for a, for, uh, for thinking about revision, especially for stuff like this, which isn't sort of gross, I wouldn't say. I think the breast looks like it's got a nice shape. Obviously, you can't see the other breast, but, you know, there's there's good things about what's, what's gone on here. Um, the scarring from a lift there, whether that was this time or previously, because the patient said they've had their implants replaced. Um, but there is a little bit of fullness in the lower pole there, a little bit of a bulge around the inframammary fold. And um, 
you know, I, I don't know, I, I'll answer now. I don't know what it is and I don't know what's going on, but I'll give an opinion on what it could be um, based on what I've heard and what the photo shows. So it, it looks like there's a little bit of a ghost of the old, can I show? I'm pretty confident of the inframemory fold. There might be a little ghost of the old inframemory fold there just above where the bul bulge is. And this bulge might be a lowering of the inframemory fold a little bit below that uh, and a little bit of, What's the word? Um, kind of not a very precise definition of inframemory fold. The inframemory folds lifted a bit, giving this um, giving this little bit of a this bulge and this lack of uh, lack of um, definition to the inframemory fold. Now this photo looks like it's been taken lying down. I might be wrong. I don't know, but I imagine that maybe sitting up it wouldn't look so bad. Sometimes you get the same problem here, here. Um, and if you get the same problem here with a lack of definition in the inframary mold, it's a bit more inframary fold. It's a bit more obvious. You can see from the suntan mark of this patient, this bit, this bit of uh, breast doesn't often see the light of day. And so it's not quite as obvious as if it was in a higher place. Um, so, you know, I don't I don't think it's I mean, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, obviously, this patient's gone to the extent of getting in touch with me. Um could something be done? Yeah, I guess you could go back in and tuck that down and put some um, sort of long dissolving sutures in to try and make that inframary fold very crisp. It's quite hard to redefine the inframary fold. It's a difficult thing to do. It can often, those stitches can often pull away because you've got the weight of the implant on it. Um, and so it would have to be a, a sort of significant problem in order to, to do that or to go into that because you're going into the implant cavity, you're running the risk of um, damaging the implant. I'm going to, sorry, I'm, I'm going to, I feel nervous showing these photos. Um, so you run the risk of damaging uh, implant, you run the risk of introducing infection. So it would be an, an operation that could be done, I guess, technically not that difficult to try and redefine that fold there where it's just come away a bit. Uh, but the main thing I would be saying is, what does it look like you know, when you're upright, clearly it would look fine in clothes. It would only be out of clothes that it would be an issue. Uh, it has been less than a year, so I would say that uh, maybe wait to see what happens because there might be swelling there, I don't know. Um, but it looks to me like the inframary fold has come away a bit for whatever reason. Um, it will be interesting to look at pre and post photos to see whether they had to do things with the pockets when they changed the implants. Perhaps if they put a bigger implant in, they might have had to lower that inframary fold a little bit more, um, which would have, uh, you know, which w runs the risk of this sort of problem. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's what it is. I think it would be relatively easy to correct it uh, technically, but there's a risk that those implant, uh, those sutures pull away, as I say. So whilst technically, I guess it's relatively easy, it's hard to get a sustained long-term result because there's a risk that it might uh, come back again. Um, hold on a minute. We've got some comments, right? Comments. Bex, hello, JB. I'm back from Istanbul. Jolly good. Jolly good. Welcome back from Istanbul. Hope you had a nice journey. Monica, how are you doing? Dr. Steve, you're the best breast surgeon in the UK. Not a question. That's a fact from Monica. Thank you, Monica. Thanks for the vote of support. Very grateful to you. I think it's where they stitched it. They go, Bex, Bex, this is what we need. We need a bit of a, other people to give an opinion what they think was gone wrong. Do you think it could be scar tissue? My drop was 43 centimetres JB. My nipples were saved and very sensitive. Um, do you think it could be scar tissue? I don't think I, I don't think it's scar tissue. I think it's the I think it, that that little sort of that little dent above the uh, the inframary fold might be the previous inframary fold where they've lowered it. You sometimes get that you have to lower the inframary fold, um, and it can be a difficult problem to correct. But it doesn't look like it, they've lowered it significantly, and they could easily just recreate the original inframary fold without too much of a problem might push the implant up a bit i guess so again you have to look at the person in real life and see how the implants are sitting um currently so it is a bit difficult to be honest with you giving second opinions like this because now i'm talking about it i'm thinking of all uh, lots of other things you know whenever you do a revision you always worry about creating a different problem you say oh I'll make that crisp again and you make it crisp again and you push the implant up a bit and the implant's sitting high especially if the implant's sitting higher on that side already um my drop is 43 centimeters that's a big drop bex that is a big drop Nipples were saved and very sensitive. Who ya? Well done. Three cheers for Bex. Nipples, they're saved. Yes. Well done, Bex. Well done. That's a big, big, big deal. That so. Um, well done. Um, next question, please. Okay. Can I have breast augmentation if I have sickle cell tray? So, um, do you know what? I have noticed 
things getting more difficult in terms of these sorts of medical problems. I have noticed the hospitals being a little bit more um, cautious about dealing. Well, one of the problems, I guess, is that we've moved to Asset Hospital in Liverpool, where we're doing most slash all of the uh, operations. And they seem to be a little cautious. I think they're all worried that they're going to be putting stress on the NHS. So they're, they're quite cautious about what sort of ops they'll do. Um, and so the bottom line is it would be up to the hospital and the anaesthetist as whether we operated on someone with sickle cell tray. Now, sickle cell tray, there's two, there's sickle cell tray and sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is the full blown dominant um, uh, disease, whereas tray just means you're a carrier of the sickle cell gene, but you, you haven't got it at the full blown dominance um, and doesn't affect people quite so much. So sickle cell disease um, in my experience, has been a no. We wouldn't do a breast augmentation on someone with sickle cell disease. We would talk to the anaesthetist again if we had that patient come come and, and ask. Sickle cell tray is less of a problem, and we'd be asking questions like, do you have sickle cell crises, which is where the, the blood cells sickle inside the body and cause bone pains and, and can cause issues, and um, usually brought on by stress and obviously having surgery is a stressful event so that is the reason why we would be worried about doing a sur any surgery really on someone with sickle cell because you don't want to uh, cause a sickle cell crisis um so this is so we'd have to take a history from you and see how bad your sickle cell is is if it's being looked after by a doctor we'd talk to that doctor and we would talk to the hospital and the anesthetist in my experience we have done surgery on people with sickle cell tray before um but not recently, as in not sort of post the COVID time, because as I say, people, uh, or at least the hostels, seem to be a little bit more cautious since COVID. Um, they're aware that the NHS is is uh, under a lot of pressure, and we don't want to have a problem in the private hostel that we then have to um, use the NHS because, you know, we would all feel bad about that. So I think the anaesthetists are all very keen to, it, to do everything they can to minimise the risk of any problem um, requiring NHS treatment. Um, we, I've never really had a problem that's, you know, meant that we've had to go to the NHS, but I guess there's always that thing in the back of your mind, what if someone needs an intensive care or something like that? So I think in general terms, they are a bit more cautious than they used to be. Um, so in, in, in principle, the answer is it would, um, it, it would be possible to have a, a breast augmentation, but in uh, practice, we'd have to check with the anaesthetist and the hospital to check they were comfortable um, with that and and the problem is at the moment I'm limited as to what hospitals I can work at um, because of all the issues. Bex is kicking off on the chat, which is great because this is great for the um, for the algorithm. You know, I think this is means that I think I think I'm right in saying more more comments are good for for well they're good anyway for engagement. I mean let's face it, let's get down to the reality of it. Bex is engaged. So what you got, Bex? Mind you, forty four. Not easy, no Bex, not easy. 43 centimeter drop, I agree with that. Bit of a laughing emoji. I'm three weeks, oh my God, two kilograms. Three weeks post-op, had two kilograms off. I bet you feel like a new woman, that's amazing. I was naughty, went shopping in Istanbul with my drains two days later. And that's not good, Bex, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, no, it's not good. I'll keep that quiet if I was you. Too late, it's out there now. Uh, how long do ladies keep their tapes dressing on for? Smiley emojis. Bex, this stuff is very difficult. I find it very difficult commenting on immediate post-op things because we're a funny bunch, plastic surgeons. We've all got our own views and our own dressings even. We've all got different dressings. I think you'll have no consistency about what sort of dressings you have, what sort of tapes and things like that in terms of uh, any surgery really, but particularly things like a breast reduction. So I can't really comment on your breast reduction by your surgeon. And to be honest with you, Bex, I wouldn't want your surgeon to comment on my breast reduction post-op regime you know i'm like if i do your breast reduction do you know ask me when to take the tapes off and we'll sort that out in fact you'll come to the clinic and we'll take the tapes off uh for you but if someone else does a breast reduction it's, it's up to them um i'll tell you now i keep mine on for a week um or at least i keep mine on for my patients i keep on but i do a specific thing with micropore tape i i, I you know make a sort of bra with micropore tape and then we put people into a supportive bra, but I, I wouldn't don't don't take that as anything to do with what you've had because they might might say, oh, it's got to be whatever. But they should have. I would have thought they'd give you a sheet or talk to you about that, would they? Maybe let you know when 
when they're supposed to be taken off. Don't be sorry, Bex. Don't be sorry. It's okay. You want to know. It's all right. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, bet talk to the talk to the Istanbulians about when that should be. But uh, yeah, I'm glad it all went well. Um, did we have a thing? I feel like we have a. I don't know if if uh, recurring viewers will uh, back me up on this, but I feel like I've had a thing where I've been going on about how we remove cysts or was it lipomas? Maybe it was cysts from all parts of the body. Have I said that before? Um, anyway, someone sent in a thing about a cyst on the eyelid, and I said to uh, Amy, look, we need a photo of that because there are certain cysts on the eyelids that we don't remove. There are things called mebobian cysts. Easy for me to say, mebobian cysts. Um, and they're on the little dot ducts which are on the, on the rim of the eyelid get blocked. And uh, that would tend to be treated by an ophthalmic surgeon. So if I was Billy Big Time uh, a couple of weeks ago saying that we remove cysts from all over the place, I stand corrected because, thank you, Corinne remembers that one, I stand corrected and uh, been taken down a peg or two because uh, eyelid cysts we might not do. So there's probably loads of other areas that people are going to run now right in. Viewers will probably be writing in their droves about all the areas of cysts we don't do. Pilot idol, pilot idol cysts and sinuses we don't do. Um, which is sort of in the natal cleft of the buttock. But anyway, on the eyelid, so that would be one. In fact, in general terms, it's good, good to send in photos. I think it's good for you because you can get an idea before you come to clinic of what we can do. And it's good for us because we don't want to sort of someone to certainly to travel a long way and then say we can't help you or it's going to be a lot more expensive than you thought and things like that. So I think it is good. I, I, I believe that that is a good service uh, that we give to people i don't think everyone does that we say look send in a photo of your cyst of your mold of your tattoo or whatever we'll have a look at it we'll let we'll give you a, an idea of what whether something can be done and what that might involve uh we'll give you an idea of the price and what have you so that then if you come because we do a see and treat thing where you come and have it done on the same day so you, you know you, you you're a bit more prepared then so always good to send in a photo but uh cysts on the eyelid uh would be something we'd probably you know we would want to have a look at because we want you to travel all the way and then we say oh no you need to see an ophthalmologist um for that um so yeah Bex, what you got? Yes, I do talk to the surgeon. Just to intro. So, what did the surgeon say? What did the surgeon say? Did they say we? My daughter had a ganglion she had drained, but it's black. Back. Oh, it's back. Back, back again. She. She. Twenty four, and the scan says she has arthritis. Right, Bex. Very well done. Very well done. You have pointed out another cyst we don't really do. Well, we kind of do. Do we do do? So basically, a, a, a ganglion is a kind of a cyst. So a ganglion, yeah. So it's, a ganglion is a is a cystic out pouching from a joint. So you often get it around the wrist. You can get them on the fingers, uh, and it's a and it's a, a, a cystic swelling, no doubt about it. It looks like a cyst, but it's from the joint. So yet again, Bex, that's another cyst we don't do. So yeah, pilonidal cysts, um, eyelid, some eyelid cysts, and ganglions we wouldn't tend to do. Um, the so we tend to do skin cysts that are in this coming from the skin so from the skin underneath the skin the ganglion is coming from the joint and it's a sort of pulsion diverticulum so it's a push pushing out from the joint um uh, and you know the classical they're classically on the wrist i don't know uh, and yeah often from arthritis she's 24 yeah they're often from the fingers i don't know if something she does or the, the the end joints you can get them mucus cysts they're called um and uh classic do you hit it with a bible or a bit big book or they often get hit them and they go away but uh, they can come back again and the problem with ganglions or ganglia probably would be the right name is that they can uh come back again that's the problem so if you hit them with a bible they can come back again if you have it drained it can come back again so hopefully bex the person who drained it might have warned you that there's a very high risk of it coming back again with draining it uh, and i'm sorry to say bex that there's actually a risk of it coming back again even with surgery and obviously with surgery you'd have a scar from wherever that ganglion is uh, and that would tend to be a hand surgeon and hand surgeons are often plastic surgeons but they're also, also orthopedic surgeons a lot of plastic surgery has crossover with specialties and hand surgery is one of those ones where both plastics and orthopedics will do it so um as plastic surgeon i i, I wouldn't do a ganglion I haven't done hand surgery in many years, but um, the 
you know, a hand plastic surgeon would do a ganglion and other slightly more general plastic surgeons than me would probably do a, do a ganglion. But uh, they would warn you, or I would hope that they would warn you that there is a high risk uh, of recurrence, even with surgery. There's less of a risk of recurrence with surgery than there would be with um, um, draining it or, or hitting it with a Bible. Uh, so it is, you know, it's less likely to come back, but it's like it is more, it is, it has got a higher risk of, of occurrence, which can be a problem. <clears throat> it wasn't in Turkey, lolol, was local hospital. Yeah, so good. Um, good, good. You're getting your comments in, Pex. Love, loving it, loving the comments. Well done, well done, you. Pex is certainly the top commenter on Facebook tonight. So Bex has got. I mean, Monica got a word in Edgeways earlier. If you don't remember what Monica's comment was, I'll just put it up again. Dr. Stanio, spelt wrong, don't care. You are the best breast surgeon in the UK. I'm pretty sure she's talking about me. Pretty sure, unless there's a, a Dr. Stanio out there and they got Monica to post, which would be a bit mean, wouldn't it? I'm, no, I'm almost certain she's talking about me. Um, of course she's talking about me. Come on. Come on. Um, what have we got? Would I be suitable for a breast lift? Oh God, sorry, I was about to, I was about to block you, Carla. Sorry. Um, would I be suitable for a breast lift with implants if I have PCSO and overactive adrenal glands? PCSO, PC. So I'm thinking PCSO is something like polycystic ovaries. Shouldn't it be PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, or polycystic? ovarian disease i'm pretty sure it's polycystic ovaries you shouldn't really use abbreviations you should sort of put the put it in properly and then and then put it in brackets but anyway i'm thinking i'm going to go with polycystic ovaries i'm going to go with that pcso isn't that like some kind of policeman that's not what a community protection officer what are they called those policemen that aren't anyway let's go with polycystic ovaries. i don't think it's a policeman with who's not qualified yet um and overactive adrenal glands crikey well um yeah yeah i mean the only the thing about uh, polycystic polycystic ovary not uncommon um i'll be thinking a little bit about your weight sometimes people can struggle a little bit with their weight with polycystic ovary um disease or syndrome and so i'd be thinking a little bit about your weight uh, but in itself polycystic ovaries is not a problem overactive adrenal glands right um hyper adrenal glands you've got a lot of adrenaline does it i mean the, again a bit like the thing earlier i can't remember what it was now but there was something earlier i was saying oh yeah was it sickle cell um we talked to the hospital i mean that might be more of a problem i would have thought the overactive adrenal glands because that might again um you know in medicine we all have our specialties and my specialty is kind of along the surgery line of things so this is a bit more like medical stuff so i'm thinking overactive adrenal glands is that going to have a problem with your blood pressure i'm guessing you know adrenal glands produce adrenaline and stuff adrenaline has an effect with your cardiovascular system so you know possibly if it if you have got problems with your blood pressure it's not well controlled if i don't know i'm a bit armchair here i would really it's a bit like Henry Ford. He, you know, he was criticised apparently for not knowing much stuff, but he always said, I'm not saying I don't know much stuff, clearly I do, but he always said, um, I might not know stuff, but I know someone who knows stuff and I've got very good people. So it's a similar sort of thing to that. I would talk to someone who knows it, so I would talk to the, uh, the anaesthetist basically. So um, as a general guide, if you've got a medical problem and you're worried about having an elective cosmetic procedure, what I would say to you is how does it affect you in your daily life? If you are going about a daily life uh, with a good exercise tolerance, you're going to the shops, you're traveling around, you're driving a car, you're going upstairs, you're getting into the bath, you're, you know, you're getting up in the morning and going to work, that is actually a good sign. If you are struggling when you go upstairs, if you're breathless when you go upstairs, if you're having difficulty with your mobility, if you're having a lot of medication, your medication is changing, you know, and your, your condition's getting better and worse and what have you, then we'd be thinking, well, now might not be the time for elective cosmetic surgery. But as a general rule, if you are stable, I would be saying that's a good sign. 
that's a good sign and hopefully things will be okay it's not definite but it's a good sign whereas if you're obviously ill you know if you come into clinic with a drip stand hunched over coughing we'd be thinking maybe this person doesn't matter what you know before you even opened your mouth i'm thinking maybe they're not good to have the breast implants now maybe they need to get over whatever it is the problem is whereas if you walk in saying hi how are you doing dr stanio you know nice to see you is it a nice day today oh temperatures dropped a bit you know whatever then i'd be thinking okay they've got a bit of medical problems but they look well so that's kind of like a um an armchair guide so um, again with your overactive adrenals if you're managing to sort of live a normal life i would be um, more happy about it but nevertheless with any medical problem we would run it by the anesthetist uh, preoperatively to make sure they're comfortable with everything and they would obviously see you prior to the surgery to make sure that they're comfortable with everything before undergoing surgery um, so polycystic ovaries can't see that being a, a problem really um overactive with renal glands not a common thing i have to have to seek help with that um so i'd have to, have to, have to take advice on that one um what have we got bex what's got bex i would have preferred to have my breast surgery here in uk but i just couldn't get the money together so i did a lot of research on my surgeon she is an amazing young lady i was coming to your clinic but my finance was turned down oh bex sorry to hear that but bex you're out the other side and you have it done and i completely understand a lot of people there is quite a significant um difference in price and i and i know that we're not um we're not uh uh unaware of that not so yeah and i'm sorry your finance was turned down and nothing to do with me bex i i don't get involved with the finance but i'm glad you got it done now and you are on the mend so that is amazing and you found an amazing lady in turkey which is well done you fantastic sophie what have you got I spoke to omi earlier today and sent you an email of concerns i've been having okay sophie okay oh here we go do i say on here so you can give me some advice please yeah you left me hanging sophie i don't know i mean this is a public forum sophie i would say so if you are comfortable saying on here um then you are welcome to say on here i must say i haven't seen your email um i don't do i i don't recognize your name are you um do i here we go oh here we go i got it i got your email sophie i mean do you want me to say anyway you think if you want me to say sophie uh, i can certainly talk about what you've written in your email but I will be talking, you know, we normally say to people, do you mind me talking about it on the Facebook Live? And then Amy puts it on the little spreadsheet. And then I talk about it because obviously I'm not going to talk about stuff because it's confidential and we have to have your consent to talk about your problem. So, oh, yes, please. OK, I shall. But what's Bex? Bex has come in. After my gastric sleeve, I was free of blood pressure and diabetes. Best thing ever. There you go. Well, there you go. So, um well done you that's you know amazing i mean i think weight weight just shows you putting on weight can cause a lot of problems and losing weight can actually cure a lot of problems and i think certainly from the nhs they found that things like gastric sleeves and um, bariatric surgery is actually cost effective because people are not on medication anymore um, and it takes a lot of the burden off the nhs so it's actually cost effective to do uh, gastric uh, or, or bariatric surgery um because it does increase improve your uh, general health so that's that's good to hear yes please i hope i've explained myself okay so i'll read out your email is that okay bex 8k to 2k wow had all tests and mammogram ecg x-ray scan surgery following day bex i've got to be honest with you i don't know how they do it for 2k we have insurance we have you know just to run the clinic we just couldn't do it uh, at that level uh anesthetist the hospital um and i completely understand and do you know what bex i've always said we can't compete on price i know we can't compete on price with that sort of thing we cannot compete on price what i always make a focus on and i don't know what they're like in other places like you know turkey and what have you but what i always focus on is the service and the aftercare the pre and the post-op and the aftercare service and you might be having a fantastic service which is great and um but 
but that's what I try and focus on in my clinic. And I can tell you now, um, there's no one, well, I don't think anyone in the UK who is a qualified plastic surgeon who is, you know, we all have to be insured. We have a um, a lot of insurance, a lot of indemnity. If there's any ever any issues, this is big operations. There can be issues. There can be problems. Uh, and you know, we have we are not allowed to operate without a certain level of insurance. Um, so we you know we're covered like five to ten million pound in insurance. We're insured for that much. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't tell you that, but um, you go oh, I'm soon for five million pounds. He's, he's insured. It'd be all right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, we have to have that in place in order to operate in the hospitals. They won't let you in the door of the hospital unless you're uh, just you know the, the, the big private hospitals, unless you're um, insured to that level. And and that wouldn't that you know the insurance every year is an awful lot. In fact, every month is an awful lot. So anyway, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But anyway, you've done well, and hopefully you won't need. I mean, that's the that's the problem with the um, cosmetic surgery. Well, not the problem. I mean, the fact is, a lot of it is it goes fine, goes well. I think that's why these places, perhaps I don't know, can operate because it often goes fine and there's no problems. And people say that's fantastic. I saved all this money; it's gone fine. Happy days, great, fantastic, because it often does go fine, you know. And it often is there's you know rarely problems. The problem comes in those cases where there is problems, then people sometimes start to realize why places are maybe doing it for this cost because maybe they're doing a lot more cases because you in order to earn the same amount of money maybe they're doing a lot more cases you know personally i don't do many cases i don't do that i don't operate that much a lot of my week you know you've got to decide what you're going to do with your week is seeing patients talking to patients pre post op corin on the instagram straight in there outstanding pre pre and post op care second to none Thank you, Corinne. You know, that's a lot of my week. I'm not operating all day every day. You know, if I was operating all day every day, I guess I could charge less because I'd be doing a lot more operations. But I'm, I'm that's not how I built the clinic. I built it to do fewer cases. But those cases that, that uh, I do do, we try and make sure that we do everything we possibly can to make sure that they're, you know, you're happy and it's all, all look good. So um, try and avoid these issues you sometimes hear about. Um, so. What we got, Sophia, sorry. Uh, FDL in 2019, after a nine stone weight loss, congrats. Uh, last year at a breast lift, which I was very happy with. Fantastic. So far, so good, Sophia. What's the problem? Well, let's keep going. This year, I'm August. I returned to my same surgeon for a slight improvement to my FDL and to have a Mons lift. I have had some serious complications since this and had four surgeries since August. August this year. Wow. The last one being October. I was left with a cavity in my chest due to complications after the initial surgery. Then surgical materials were removed in October. My issue is I heal to a certain point and then the hole opens again. My surgeon has said this could go for a lengthy time and have no clarity. So I want to have a second opinion. I hope how I explain this makes sense. Thank you for trying. Really appreciate this. There's a photo here of a hole. So this is the FDL I'm thinking. Um, rather than the breast lift. It seems to be a T-junction. There's often problems with T-junctions, and it's one of the issues with a fleur de lis that you do have a T-junction, and also with the breast lift, you have a T-junction, and there's often problems at that T-junction. Um, I'd be interested, uh, Sophia, what, what you've had four surgeries since August. What sort of surgeries are you having? Um, I mean, the problem comes with the T-junction is that... That's the confluence of the scars, and that's the tightest point. I don't know if you've got an idea how they do a fleur de lis. It's like a, a, it's like a fleur de lis shape. So uh, let's get a bit of uh, let's get a bit of interaction in here, shall we? So like that, then like that, then like that, and that. Oh, I should have needed another colour, shouldn't I? Belly buttons here. So um, belly buttons there, tummy, yeah, head, legs, yeah. Are we getting that? Legs down here. So fleur de lis is that sort of, so that point and that point go to a point here to form that T-junction, yeah? So that goes to, that goes to a scar like that. So that point and that point meets that point. Do you see that? So that's the T-junction. So I think that's where your healing problem is. There, are we, is that? 
So when 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 that point, God, this is hard. That point and that point go to that point. Oh, and then <laughs> left and right. Anyway, do you get it? So that's 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 the that's the tightest point basically. So at T junctions, whether it be a breast lift or a third lee, you often get. So we put a lot of stitches in there. So when I do a breast lift, breast reduction, I always leave this last stitch I do at the T-junction outside. And people often say, why have you left this stitch here? I'm like, I haven't left it there. I've deliberately left it on the outside. You know, they, you left the stitch there because there's so many knots at that T-junction. And knots, suture material, are foreign bodies. And that can, t the body doesn't like having a foreign body. It doesn't heal probably when there's a foreign body there. But you need the suture material because you need it to heal together. So this can be a nightmare when they close it together because... Um, you know, they're obviously closing it tight because that's why you're having the surgery. You want it to be closed tight. Um, some surgical materials were removed in October. So it sounds a bit dodgy, that surgical materials, Sophia. Do you mean suture material? Because, you know, it might be... Uh, and the deeper we go when we do tummy tucks, we put different layers of sutures. So we're very deep. We put a long lasting suture very deep. But that hole might be very deep, might be going all the way down to that long lasting suture. And if that long lasting suture gets infected um, and gets exposed, then that can be a problem. Then we're an issue. What do we do? Do we take the stitch out? But then we worry about the wound, you know, integrity of the wound and not holding together properly. Or do we do the suture in? But then it drain, as your surgeon has said, it can drag on for to be frank with you it can drag on for months and you know a year i've seen it drag on for it these things can drag on terribly um these wound healing problems so it, it can be and, and you say you've got no clarity it can be hard to give you clarity because you know wound healing problems is really hard to know how they're going to go um my advice and again but like i said i don't know if you're here earlier for um the first one sophia about second opinions not very good with um it's kind of it's not really a proper second opinion this like it's just, well, it is a second opinion, but it's better to, if you want a, like a proper opinion, you go and see someone in the clinic and they examine you, get your history, et cetera, et cetera. But nevertheless, I'm very happy to give you my view on, on what's going on. Um, so, you know, my view is that uh, they, they're, I would imagine they're trying to help you. I imagine they're trying to do the right thing. They've obviously closed it tight because they want to give you a good result, but that tightness has involved it opening up a bit. Um, it's not uncommon with a fleur de lis to get problems at the T junction like this. Um, and it is difficult to know what to do with that suture material because when the suture material gets exposed, on paper, you should remove it. If a foreign body uh, is exposed, then you should really remove it. But you're in a difficult situation with, with uh, the fleur de lis tummy tuck because you know that's under a lot of tension and you will worry about removing that. Um, uh, suture material so all i'm saying is that it's a difficult problem uh sophia and i can sympathize with your surgeon that it is a, a difficult problem um and you know just work with your surgeon you know and i don't think they're trying to give you a lack of clarity they don't know how long it's going to heal they're going to see you every whatever you know few days or week or whatever depending on how good or bad it is and they'll hopefully they'll work with you and say oh it's going well hopefully it'll be you know but i don't think anyone's going to say oh on the 5th of january you're going to be healed or on the 3rd of march it's all going to be over you just we don't know as, as surgeons um oh hold on a minute you, oh, I've, got, I've gone off on one i've gone off on one and i've missed um what have we got here yes and i see you got a question there uh bex i do video call with my surgeon since been home i didn't go with the company i went direct find how find her myself well done yes august this year this is how it looks right now the original surgery then the second one was to drain a seroma okay then i developed another seroma and at that point the surgeon performed a third surgery to drain and make a cavity to heal from the base up which started to heal then it opened up again because surgical material was left inside no surgical sponge I also had a staph infection. I feel bad for you, Sophie. Bex, thank you. Sophie, do you dress it yourself? Um, yeah, so, wow. Okay. So, yeah, surgical sponge. What? That's, uh, that's pretty bad. Um, yeah. S seromas, yeah. So you had an infected seroma in there. I mean... The problem with cavities, Sophie, is that um, the cavity doesn't heal. And it heals, like you said earlier, from the bottom up type thing. And so 
you know that that's why you often need to pack them because the wound won't heal the wound doesn't look very big you've actually got not a not a huge wound so you've got a small wound but it's probably draining all the time and the wound doesn't heal until the stuff until the cavity is empty till the cavity is healed and then the, the skin wounds are lasting to heal so in a way we kind of don't want the skin wound to heal because you see the wound tiny little hole and you think why don't you just put a stitch in there and then job done and you're like well no the problem is not the wound the problem is the cavity behind the wound so you can't just stitch it up and then say that's great you know off you go you have to get that cavity to heal and the, this is the problem with tummy tucks there is a space there and that space can be a big space and that's when you get seromas and these issues they, they're 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 difficult and um yeah they are difficult i don't, I don't know what else to say and uh you know you just have to just try and as surgeons we just have to try and keep you on side keep you positive keep you eating well eating healthily fresh fruit and veg good diet good protein try and keep you you know keep you on side because it can be a, a, a very distressing time for, for all concerned and i'm sure your surgeons distressed but um i'm dressing my, it myself they put in a packing the time of surgery to make it heal and think they overlooked it oh so i started to heal then opened up again oh sophia have you got a vacuum suction on it um so yeah well that's not going to help uh sophie if there's a from if they've left you know if there's something in there i mean that's the other thing for a wound that's completely not healing you've got to think is there something in there which they've obviously thought of and found this sponge in there which is that's never going to heal whether there's a whether there's a sponge or something like that that's a proper foreign body not like a, a stitch so um sophie you've been through the mill you you are, are going through the mill um so yeah Oh, here we go. Have you got a suction? There you go. They did give me a negative wound pressure dressing on for two weeks. Yeah, they're good. But I would. It depends on how much stuff is coming out, Sophie. If it's very exudative, I'm. I'm imagining it would fill up because. Is it one of those mini ones with the sort of plaster that sort of sucks? Um, that might fill up quite quickly. But they are great dressings. The negative pressure uh, vacuum dressings for, for for wounds like this. But uh, as I say, if it, if it's producing a lot of fluid, it might overwhelm it um yeah wow um what we, oh uh and what you got hi jonathan just been diagnosed with breast cancer again in my right breast i have to have mastectomy and reconstruction i'm scared what will it look like it's at george elliott and don't be scared breast reconstruction is amazing absolutely amazing and the number one thing i would say to you is look Focus on the breast cancer, focus on the cancer excision uh, and getting, you know, getting that sorted first. Um, George Elliott, fantastic, you know, good surgeons, good doctors there. The how what it will look like. Well, it depends on what sort of reconstruction you have. There's lots of different reconstructions you can have. You can have implant reconstruction, you can or a tissue reconstruction. Those are the two sort of broad categories. And in terms of tissue reconstruction, meaning your own body. Uh, broadly speaking it's your back and your tummy i guess are the two common ones there's there's a few other ones which are a bit niche um and sometimes particularly with the back you take some tissue from the back it's not not big enough to reconstruct the breast so we often use an implant and the back um so but these are things you'll talk to with your surgeon so i'll tell you what it'll look like uh, angie it probably won't look quite like a normal breast out of a bra but they're very good in a bra uh, and in clothes and you know you probably hopefully you'll get sort of relatively good balance in in, uh, in clothes and um I, I wouldn't focus too much on you know what it would look like and scared and stuff like that it's it's going to be fine and give it time and if it's not there's often things they can do to tweak it let's just say you know let's just focus on getting this um getting the getting the breast cancer away uh, and i wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about the cosmetics of it but simply because they're you know they we are very good at, uh, at the cosmetics of breast reconstruction these days so you know we can do a pretty good job these days of certain certainly in clothes out of clothes you know depending on the type of reconstruction you might have oh it's an implant you might so you, you you're probably going to have some asymmetries out of clothes uh, particularly if you're going to need rate, uh, radiotherapy and what have you but uh, in clothes you know often 
happy days you know you, you look looks looks fine i mean it won't feel like a normal breast um uh it'll and it'll be firmer and it'll, it'll sit higher than your normal breast certainly when you take your bra off but uh but as i say in a bra in clothes um they they they're pretty pretty good and and, and i hope and i hope you'll be in, in, impressed um but good luck with that and uh, do let me know if you want anything from me if you want to set up a call or anything like that to talk about this specifically, just just you and me, I'm happy to do that. Um, but uh, good luck, and um, you know, as I say, they're pretty they're pretty good these doctors these these days, you know. Um, so good luck with that, Ange, and I'll, I'll be thinking of you. Um, what we got? Thanks. No, nice to hear from you, Ange. And let me know if you need anything from me. But uh, good luck. Um, Sophie, what have you got? Now there's nothing in there, the surgeon said, that this hole has opened now because it may be an internal stitch that has worked his way to the top. Okay. This week I saw the surgeon and he said he doesn't need to see me again because or in wound clinic to go back when I've healed and he will discuss revision once I've healed, but he said there's no advantage to seeing me. Okay. Um, Bex, thinking of that lady, Ange. I think it, Bex, Ange, Bex is thinking of you on Facebook. We're on dual, dual modalities. Um, Sophie, and this could just keep happening for a long time. Yeah, good luck with everything, Ange. Yeah, um, yeah, good luck, Ange. You're getting you're getting um, positivity from the Facebook uh, uh, massive. Um, it's Sophie, I agree with your surgeon. It could 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 drag on and and as i say there is a confluence of stitches at that t-junction so there will be stitches under there which which are foreign bodies not like a sponge which is you know literally a, a thing that was left in there but uh but stitches themselves are foreign bodies because they're they're not um they're not part of the body and so they don't have a blood supply so if you get infection around a stitch antibiotics don't 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 get rid of it because it's not got a blood supply so it just grumbles on and um it's horrible sophie and i've got to be honest with you sophie body contouring surgery is is it's a tough tough thing to choose to do because it, it you do get problems or you can get problems like this which um you know which are which are tough to deal with and it sounds like your surgeon well your surgeon's kind of working with you they're not going to see you anymore but didn't see you but anyway hopefully they're there in the background you know so i type thing there if you need them if it if it gets you know it kicks off but um yeah it it sounds like you've been through it sophie and you want to get this year over with dust it off package it off and then you know 2023 will be your year sophie you'll be healed and done hopefully done and dusted but uh yeah all i can say is i sympathize with your surgeon i'm sure they're working to make you right and it sounds like they're looking after you with you know if they're using negative pressure and look at you in the wound clinic <clears throat> which is probably what you need really the wound clinic and, and uh, just make sure that you're you know it doesn't get infected doesn't get worse but it probably will quite be quite slow to to uh, heal is that helpful sophie i don't know if that's helpful but you know it's no one's trying to withhold information no one can tell you how long this is going to take to heal because we just see the tip of the iceberg with the wound we don't know what's going on uh, underneath um underneath there i hope so jj thank you yeah i hope so too sophie thanks thanks for that thanks for getting involved thanks for being part of it and uh we're we're thinking of you so good luck with that so um yeah Thinking of you, Ange. Thinking of you, Sophie. What you got? Yes, thank you. I understand it's such a difficult situation. It is, but I, th I think you're being looked after, Sophie. It sounds like you're being looked after, which is which is important, isn't it? I mean, it's a nightmare that it's happening, but at least at least they're trying to get you get you through it. So, um, yeah, that's the problem. For slight improvement to my FDL and the Mons lift. Trying to do a tweak, and anyway difficult job this Sophie this plastic surgery type thing but, uh, anyway good luck with that right I better go and uh, put my feet up because that was emotionally draining big love Corin uh, big love to you all on the live tonight yeah Corin sending love I'm looking for my phone then but my case is empty because my phone is there <laughs> I, 
put it on without case. I thought I'd do it. Yeah, it's holding a lot better without the case. So that's obviously a little uh, tweak that I've learned there. So listen, uh, Facebook people, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for the interaction. Corin, thank you for being there. Ange, thinking of you. I'm sure it's all going to go fine. I will probably be here next week. Who knows what's happening next week? Yeah, probably so I will. Yeah, 13th. We'll take my car to the garage, yeah. Jackie, nice to see you. Jackie, good to see you. Oh, I'll put my hand over the camera. Take it easy.